All right, so four lessons in and you have already created your very own image recognition app and you're now able and you're now able to tell the difference between hot dogs and non hot dogs. And everybody who has that need will be able to download your app and be able to solve their own personal life crises that way. So in this lesson, as promised, we want to tidy up the UI and make everything look a little bit nicer and look a little bit more like the app that the Silicon Valley team came out with. So let's get started. Okay, so one of the first things I want to address is that when we send our data in the background to IBM Watson, um, waiting for our classification results, we don't tell the user about that. And that means that they can click on the camera button repeatedly, sending photos again and again, without realizing that something's actually happening in the background. So in order to correct that, I wanna do two things. One is I want to disable the camera button from being able to be tapped um, when we're waiting for the results. And the other thing is I want to show a spinner to show the user that something is happening. So just be patient and it will, it will happen. So in order to do that, as you can see up here, we've already got a IP outlet that's linked to our camera button. And all we have to do is just toggle the is enabled um, property in order to make it grayed out or make it active. So the time point where we want to make it grayed out is after the user has finished picking um, media with information. So it's when they've picked that image and that image is being processed in the background and being sent to IBM, IBM Watson. So this is the point where I want to tap into the camera button and I want to set its property is enabled to false. So this will gray it out. And the time when I want to re-enable it is after our classification results has come back. So at this point, I'm going to again, pull up the dispatch a dispatch queue. And I'm going to tap into main and async. And inside this code block, I'm going to tap into the camera button. And I'm going to set it is enabled to true. So now, once the results have come back, the user can once again interact with that button to be able to test another image. So of course, remember we are again inside a closure, so add that self in front of camera button. Now in these same two places where we've enabled and disabled the button are also the exact same places where I want to start a spinner and stop the spinner. So in order to use that loading spinner, um, or that heads up display, I need to import that other library that we um, incorporated with Carthage, which is called SV Progress HUD. So once I've imported SV Progress HUD, then it is so easy to actually use this framework. All you have to do is go to the point where you want to start the spinner, which is after the user has picked the image that they want to send to IBM Watson. So the same time where the camera button is no longer enabled, we want to write SV progress HUD. So that's actually a capital P by the way, dot show. So that starts off the animation with the spinner. And once we've got our results back, then we want to tap into that spinner again. And we're gonna write SV progress HUD dot dismiss. So let's run our app and see what it looks like this time. So I'm going to <laughs> change this back to saved photos album so I can show it to you quickly on the simulator. All right, so here's our app and I'm gonna tap on the camera, I'm gonna select an image and now our spinner is active and our camera button was disabled. So it tells us it's not hot dog and our camera button is re-enabled and our spinner goes away. So that is a very quick and a pretty neat addition to the user interface. Now, the other thing that I want to change is I wanna make that top bar look similar to what they've got up here, which is yellow font and a green background when it is a hot dog and red background when it's not a hot dog, as well as adding in these images. Um, so I'm gonna add some images into my image assets folder. So um, I'm going to pull up my hot dog pics and I'm gonna just simply drag it into here. So I've got one green icon, which is when it is a hot dog identified, not hot dog. And I want to add a hot dog to the background as well. So I've just got three images that are gonna be added to my assets folder. So I want to say that if it was indeed a hot dog. Then I want to change the navigation bar to a green color. So to do that, I'm gonna write self.navigation 
controller dot navigation bar dot bar tint color equal UI color dot green. And also we have to switch off the translucency. So self dot navigation controller dot navigation bar dot is translucent equals false. Okay, so I'm just going to copy these two lines of code and put it below our not hot dog condition and just change that color from green to red. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to go into the main dot storyboard and add a image view just below the title bar. And I want to set that to aspect fit and add in a few uh, constraints. So maybe let's say it's zero from the top, zero from the left and zero from the right. And it has a fixed height. And this is where we're going to be putting that image where it says uh, where it is a uh, hot dog or it's not hot dog, right? So, but I'm going to leave it empty for now. And the other thing that I want to do here is I want to add a button, which is going to be my Twitter share button. And I'm going to put that in while I'm on the main dot storyboard. So let's just make that button a little bit bigger. And it's going to have a white font. And let's say it's also the 35 points and make it bold and have the button with a background of light blue. And I'm also going to make the corners of that button rounded by just adding a corner radius here. And you have to change from Boolean to number and we'll change it to 15. I think that should be sufficient. So that won't be reflected in the design, but you'll see it once the app runs. And we're going to go into the assistant editor and link up um, all our designs. So I don't know why that keeps on going into manual, but make sure that it's in automatic and make sure that you're linked up with the view controller class. I need a IB outlet for this image view. I'm going to call it top bar image view. I also need an IB outlet for the button. So I'm just going to call that share button. That's a good point. Actually, I should probably change the name of that button to share. And besides having an outlet, I will also need an IB action for the button. So I'm just going to say share tapped, change it from outlet to action. Make sure that doesn't say any and instead it says UI button and connect it up. All right, cool. So let's head back into the view controller and do a little bit more modification. So the first thing we want to do is um, to be able to display that image um, in that image view that we just created below the top bar. So that was called self dot top bar image view, I think top bar image view dot image equals UI image named named uh, what did we call it? I think it was just called hot dog. And in this case down here, when it's not a hot dog, then self dot top bar image view dot image equals UI image named named uh, was it not hot dog. All right, cool. So um, one last thing that I want to change that I just so I just had a look at this design here and there's one last thing I want to change, which is change that font to a yellow color. And I think afterwards we'll be ready to go. So make sure that the document outline is popped out and click on the top bar um, and select navigation bar and change our title color to yellow. Now, Let's run our app and see what happens. All right, so our app is up here and you can see that the share button's appearing even before we have anything to share. So we probably have to fix that in a little while, but let's test out the other features of our app. So I'm going to select an image from here and it's loading. So it's sending that over to IBM Watson and yay, not hot dog. Cool, that's awesome. So we can make that font a little bit bigger 
So we can probably make that font a little bit bigger by changing it to a uh, system and bold and 40 points. So that font might be a little bit too big. Uh, so let's step it down a little bit. Let's make it 35 points. So that's working and that's pretty neat. The last thing that I want to do is to make that share button work. And that share button should only really appear once the image has been classified, right? That would be the only case where it makes sense. And if we head back over to our view controller, we can make it hidden by default when the view's loaded up. So we can tap into that share button. Yep, dot is hidden equals true upon loading up. And only once we've got the results do we make that share button. Uh, so it will actually be self dot share button dot is hidden equals false. All right, so now it appears once we've gotten our results back. So how do we make the share button work? Well, that is going to go inside this IB action. Now, what we want to do is we want to use the socials library to bring up an action sheet that will tweet whatever it is that you want to type in. And we can actually pre-format it with some existing message. But in order to use it, we need to import it. So let's go to the top of the image, uh, to the top of the view controller. And we're going to import a library called a social. I think it's called social or socials. I think it's social. There we go. Yeah, social. And inside the share tapped IB action, we're going to first check to see if the compose view controller is available. So we're going to check if SL compose view controller dot is available, is available for service type, SL service type Twitter. There we go. And if it is available, then we want to create a new view controller that is SL compose view controller for service type SL service type Twitter. And then we're going to set the initial text of this uh, compose view controller. And we're going to say, see if your food is a hot dog. So you can, of course, adapt this to whatever you want it to say. So we can actually set the initial text to um, be what is currently inside the navigation bar title. Navigation item dot title. So we also want to tweet out an image with our result. And we're going to do that by tapping into the VC, which is the Compose, Compose View Controller. And we're going to uh, use the add image method. And the image that we're going to use is called, in this case, hot dog background. I think it's this one. Yeah, that's what we want. And then finally, all we need to do is just present that view controller like we've done before with the, um, with the image picker. So present VC animated true completion nil. So I'm going to unwrap that view controller and we should now be getting our compose view controller show up on screen. Now, remember, this is an if statement. So there's also an else condition. If the compose view controller is not available for service type Twitter, that usually means that there's no Twitter account associated with the current iPhone. So in this case, we want to use an else statement and we want to change the navigation bar title to please log into Twitter so that they know that there's something going on there. So we're going to say dot navigation item dot title equals please log in to Twitter. All right, cool. And one last thing that I want to fix is that I don't like the fact that initially when you come into this in when you come into the app it's completely blank so i'm going to change the view that's behind the image view so remember whenever you're looking at these stacks on xcode it's always this direction so this is at the top second third and last so i'm going to change the background color of the base image view to a particular hex code so i want this nice blue color bright blue color and i'm also going to put in an image view 
that is going to go right in the middle of this and I'm going to say width and height fixed and also horizontally and vertically align in the container. And right now this image view is going to obscure our previous image view. This one is the one that's just going to hold static hot dog image and this is the one that is going to hold the user chosen image. So when the so when the app loads up I want to have a static hot dog image which is the hot dog which is the hot dog background image um, and I'm gonna make that aspect fit and that image of the hot dog cannot obscure that user chosen image view so I'm going to drag that behind it so that because this image view is see-through, when the app initially loads up, you'll be able to see the hot dog image. But after this image view is populated, that hot dog image disappears. So let's give that a spin and see if that works. All right, cool. That's looking a little bit snazzier than before, right? And if I click the camera button, let's choose one of these nice waterfalls. Loading, not a hot dog. So guys, you have made a image recognition app that is as good, if not better, than Jing Yang's on Silicon Valley. You can now classify images based on whether if they are hot dogs or not hot dogs. Now, clearly, if you have been making the app along with me, you can see that this image classification system, um, courtesy of IBM Watson, is way more powerful than the app on Silicon Valley because it can actually tell you exactly what it is that it thinks it might be. So let's load up the app onto a real device and give it a spin. All right, guys, here is the moment of truth. I have got the seafood app that we have created together on my physical device on my iPhone, and we are going to test it out with a array of items that I have managed to source from around the office kitchen. I apologize in advance that my hot dog making skills are subpar, but my app making skills are not, hopefully. So let's give it a spin. So I'm gonna tap on the camera icon and I'm going to select my first item, which is a neglected grapefruit from the office fruit bowl. And we are going to use this photo and see what we get. Not hot dog, I can agree with that. Let's try the next item. So here is a beautiful hot dog that I have created. I've crafted rather. Let's take a photo. Use photo. And this is the moment of truth. Hot dog. There we go. So it works. That's amazing. So let's just check with our final item. A strawberry from that same neglected fruit bowl. Let's see what this is going to give us not hot dog. That is incredible. So I'm also going to use the share button to tell everybody on the London App Brewer account that my food is not hot dog. So I hope you guys had fun and I certainly did building this app. I hope you learned a little bit about how to integrate um, IBM Watson into your Swift projects and visual recognition. And if you guys have any suggestions for other projects or other technologies you want us to create a tutorial on, then please comment in the text box below. And if there's enough upvotes, then we will do it. So here is goodbye from me, Angela at the App Brewery. Till next time, I'll see you on one of our other tutorials. All right, bye.